Monarch is building the future for those interested in one wallet that consolidates the best services and functionality into one simple and easy to use app. Monarch will empower users to control all aspects of their financial kingdom from the palm of their hand. You may have heard the phrase, not your keys, not your crypto. With Monarch, you own your keys and seed, meaning you own your crypto. With Monarch, you can store, receive, send, swap, buy, sell, and earn interest on your crypto, track your portfolio, the news, the market cap, and more today. We're constantly adding new services and updates too. Learn more today by visiting monarchtoken.io or download the wallet for free today from Apple or Google. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Beards and Bitcoins. It is a crypto podcast for the man's man and absolutely the ladies that love him. I'm your co-host, Jay Chains. I am joined by my co-host, BitBoy. How you doing today, my man? I'm doing good, man. I'm getting. I'm actually going to can, uh, Canada tomorrow. Canada? Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Yeah. I haven't been to Canada since I was a small child. I was there a couple of years ago. I went with uh, my uncles and some cousins, and we did a uh, uh, one of those fishing trips. Dude, shore oh, yeah. lunch, have, Lord Shore lunch is probably one of the best things I've ever had. I also gained like 20 pounds in a week. But Well, I'm on keto right now, so I can't eat any. Well, I could eat some fish maybe. But Ooh, dude, I'm, you not could eat eat, I'm not going to eat fish if it's not fried. It's fried fish. It's like fried in oil on the, uh, right there on the, the side of the road. Is it breaded at all? I don't think I can eat fried fish. I'm pretty sure on keto. Probably not. No, I guess I could. I guess I probably could, I guess. I'll have to check it out when I go up. I'm just going to Toronto, so I don't know if we've got a lot. If there's a lot of big fishing in Toronto, because I don't think it's on the coast. I could be I, wrong. I, yeah, I don't think it's in that part of town. I don't think so. Well, I bring it up because I, I'm going to Canada. It's my first international trip with my new passport that I got Ooh. that had been expired for a long time. I've been out of the country since 2010, uh, which was no, that's that's not true. No, I went to I went to Honduras in 2016, I think. So that's right. I did go into Honduras for a little mission trip action went up hiking the mountains helping people out that's good for you but honduras is a cool place i've been there yeah 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 so uh but we're taking an international because today we're going to be taking an international yep. on this podcast we're going to be talking with quinn from mid earth crypto you guys can find his uh youtube channel mid earth crypto you can find him on twitter at mid earth crypto and man this was a fascinating conversation we had Oh man, absolutely. Learned, you know, a little bit about uh, some international stuff. You know, obviously, you know, the, one of the pressing issues that's going on all over the world right now is Hong Kong. So we got to talk about that, which is great. Uh, kind of learn a little bit more in depth from him uh, on some of the things that, you know, is happening in, in his home or, you know, where he has a home in Ecuador. And we'll see a tie in between what's happening in Ecuador, what's been happening in the rest of South America, and then even what's happening in Hong Kong and China. So definitely very interesting. You guys are going to learn a lot. This is what we're fighting against in cryptocurrency. We're fighting against the centralization of currency, the centralization of you know a power like China, communism, uh, that basically tries to control people. Cryptocurrency is meant to free people. So that's really the tie into this whole episode. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's, uh, let's get started. All right, here we go with uh, Mid-Earth Crypto. We got this shit now, can go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Beards and Bitcoins podcast, the crypto podcast for the man's man and the women who love them. I'm here with my co-host, Jay Chains. What is going on, Chains? What is up, homie? Man, beautiful day in the life. Oh, yeah. Beautiful day. And we're also joined by one of my other buddies, Quinn from Mid-Earth Crypto. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of adoption videos lately. We've got some big stuff planned we're going to tell you guys about today. But uh, yeah, Quinn, what's going on? What's going on, man? Appreciate you guys having me on the uh, the podcast. I fill in with a beard. I cut it off a couple of weeks ago, but it's kind of just now got no, to work. Good. Oh, back. it works. It works, man. Yeah, it works. There. Good to I see you. It. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. So. Good to see you. Last time, I think I, last time I saw you was in uh, San Fran for Bitcoin 2019. Yeah, yeah. You Bit guys were doing the, uh, the Pomp interview that day. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The crypto bit bus. You're in, uh, you're in Houston though, right? Uh, Austin. Austin. Okay, okay. Texas. Cool. Very nice. What's, Texas, your next, same, uh, same what's your next conference schedule looking like? Ooh, I think Vegas. That's it. Yeah. If, if things work out, yeah. Okay. Very are you nice. going to sleep on our floor? Like, an, am I going to be Armando? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, me and Quinn got a room. Nice. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you want to hit it up, we got we got some floor space for you, bud. Uh, cool. That's a double queen in there. We just push those bad boys together. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the Scarface King is what they call that, okay? Perfect. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a real California style king yeah. right there. Ooh. Okay. Oh, burn city, burn city, burn city. We got some announcements we want to make uh, Ooh, for we like our listeners. What's, what's your announcement, Quinn? Uh, my announcement is actually kind of pertains to Justin's son. I will be with Tron on Monday. We're going to be at a USC doing a DAP presentation. The same thing we did in Atlanta before, but for the college blockchain group there. And so um, – I'll be flying out to LA actually early just to do that. And uh, if anybody's in the area, please come out. It's free food, free drinks, and 30 minutes of me talking about Tron dApps. So, what are your uh, what are your favorite or recommended Tron dApps? I thought about the sports book coming out on Topia. So Topia has a uh, a good sports book that has a line that's better than any of the other books I've seen out there so far. Just like three, four, five percent sometimes. So I'm excited about that. And um, you know, the divs on Tron bet on Wink on dice from Wink have been big. That's been paying bills. So wink. I don't hate on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you that are listening, you couldn't see my Wink, but now I will allow you to visualize it. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'll be out there in LA uh, next week as well. But by the time everybody's listening to this, it's going to be Thursday. So I'm in LA right now as you're listening to this podcast. Uh, but we got some more <laughs> announcements for you guys. Uh, we have a new 21 best practices for Bitcoin list for the podcast here. Yep. And you guys are going to be able to get access to that. All you got to do is go to beardsandbitcoins.com and uh, just sign up, put your email in, and we will send that to you. And then we got some more exciting stuff coming out. We got some videos for the podcast. We're going to be doing based on uh, those practices. Isn't that right, Jay Chains? That is right. That is right. And not only is it for people new to the space, we'll have some advanced modules. We'll have some beginner modules. Like It'll, it'll be beneficial to everybody. So makes getting into crypto it makes navigating your crypto kingdom a little bit easier that's the plan yeah so head, head on over to beardsandbitcoins.com and make sure you guys sign up for that so quinn and i also have an announcement we this is this, this is, is like announcement the City. tron announcement spectacular episode uh we are starting a tour where we're going to be going around to all kinds of different colleges across the United States. Tron is playing a big hand in sponsoring a lot of those. Uh, who knows, maybe even all of them, but uh, we have a name for it. You want to give them the name, Quinn? Yeah, well, okay, so we came up with a name together, I think. It was, it was yeah. in a conversation on the phone, but I said, I think I said, I want to decentralize America. That's and it. then you said, well, it's a decentralized America tour. And Ooh, that, that is hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we were yeah. just in the conversation, and if any of you snakes out there are trying to go steal our, our domain, it was free already. We got it. Okay. Ooh. Well, it wasn't free. I did have to pay thirteen ninety nine for it. It was available. That's right. So do you guys can check out decentralizedamerica.com. Maybe by the time this airs, I might have something up for it at least. Maybe some information, maybe a coming soon page. But yeah, decentralizedamerica.com is going to be the name of our tour. We're going to be going on over the next year. And ultimately, we're hoping to eventually start our own crypto conference for it, the Decentralized America Conference. So, Because that's what we're really passionate about is decentralization. I mean, this for us isn't about like, getting in on low coins and, you know, having a moon and things like that is really an idea. It's a movement. And I feel like really all three of us, you know, we're all passionate about decentralization. I think that's uh, that's really important. Can I make an announcement really quick? Yes. Oh my gosh. Lad ladies and gentlemen, Jay Chains. Here's my announcement. If you guys decide to pick Austin, Texas as one of your locations. For oh, it is for sure. Oh, well, guess what? You guys can stay at my house. The party will be there. Yeah. The meetup will be there. Ooh, I don't know if my wife is good with me staying at your house. <laughs> is he really not? Well, Ben fell in love with my dog. Well, my dog fell in love with Ben. That's right. She actually held my hand. I've never had a dog hold my hand before. She was and she literally was like, ben. hold my paw. And she like would just stare at me until I would grab it. And I would just grab her paw and she would like the, just relax, you know? So I'm kind of in love with the dog. I mean, she's really sweet. Fia is her name. Maybe by the time the video airs, we can get up a list of future cities. I know we've got three so far scheduled, yeah. the USC, Georgia State University, and then uh, Orlando. Orlando will be on number six, but the other ones we can put some dates on to get you know an idea. Yeah. Definitely, if Austin has a, uh, like a blockchain school or a university with a presence, then on the list. Uh, yeah, I think Austin has a school there. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. It's a. Uh, they're not. They's not that important, though, right? I mean, they're, they're just, not that big. And, and yeah. JChain's got some pull over there, I think, right? Oh, does he? Eh, we'll see. And Austin, Austin has a huge blockchain community as well. So, I mean, a lot of a lot of big Bitcoin maximalists are from there. Uh, Jimmy Song is from there. Oh. Um, Decred's here, so I think Marco, yeah, Decred Marco, is there. So, like Marco yep. lives here. There's a yeah. There's a bunch of big people here. I don't want to. 
name drop, you know. Oh, you know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> well, while we're talking about the Decentralized America Tour, and we're definitely coming to hang out with Jay Chains in Austin, let's talk about really outside of the, Amer- uh, of the America. Outside of the America. Outside of America, a little south down to America. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about what's going on in the world because there, there's a lot of moving pieces going on right now. That's something we really like to talk about on the podcast here. Things that are going on in the world that affect pretty much everybody that maybe everybody can't see the chess moves that, that are being made. So Quinn has a lot of experience. He lived in Ecuador for a long time. I still currently is a citizen there, right? Permanent resident. Yeah, I can yeah. get my citizenship, but uh, we're, we've just been here for six months. We were normally there and yeah. normally everything's kind of pretty calm and tranquil, but recently a change in government through a democratic process, you know, he was elected and voted in. But um, this president has turned out to not be the puppet that the former president wanted him to be mm-hmm. and has since cuddled up next to a kind of American values almost. One of the things that you can really look to being a, a huge marker for that change was the Julian Assange case. You know, people don't really think about like how, why was he released from the Ecuadorian consulate after all those years? Well, it's because Lenin Moreno let him go and he did that as a favor to the U.S., they indebted themselves heavily to China, right? So the president, the former president was Correa, Rafael Correa. He went to University of North Carolina, actually. And a real smart dude, very, very, like, he knows how to speak to the, his people, right? He knows what words to say. He knows how to talk to them and get them. He's got a really strong base in that country. And so even though he's ex, expatriated in, in Belgium right now, he still has a very strong presence and, and control grip in the country. Word is, is that two weeks ago, he went to Venezuela and made a deal with that sitting president, Nicolas Maduro, to have Venezuelan migrants. Nice pronunciation. You like that right there, yeah? I do. Uh, <laughs> to have that, those because there's a lot of migrants that are coming into Ecuador right now from Venezuela. And what he's done is he sent gangs, basically gangs of Venezuelans to wreak havoc during these protests. And so it's this real weird thing that's going on right now because the government's asking for help from the U.S. that might, you know, send down the Coast Guard or National Guard, excuse me, not not Coast Guard. Ecuador does have a coast. The Galapagos Islands are there. They do. Well, this is, that's another crazy thing. So that's where the turtle is, right? Yeah. Isn't that where evolution started? I like turtles. Yes, Darwinism. Absolutely. The idea that, well, so here's the thing. That's one of the most protected regions in the entire world, right? You have endangered species. And two years ago, there were 14 huge, huge, huge Chinese trawlers out there just getting everything out of the water every like just all kinds of really really rare sharks and stuff the ecuadorian coast guard caught one of them and this is what started that whole thing this new president's regime is not friendly with the chinese government and instead of you know kind of going along he puts them in prison and impounds the boat does all this stuff well they get away they go into peruvian waters and raise a russian flag they switched their chinese flags out raised russian flags and went into peruvian waters so that they had treaty arrangements within those countries so that, that, that started off the confrontation that's now led to this march on the capital. You know, two days ago, the indigenous population marched in the capital city in Quito and forced the president there to evacuate. And now they're in a compound in Guayaquil held up. He moved the entire government there. And uh, it's kind of gotten worse. It's not gotten better. Right now, they, they're process, protesting today. And one of the pictures that my friend took, Lindsay, she's there on the ground, lives in the city. She has a you know, really awesome, powerful photography going on where it's like she'll get these images of guys masked up with malts of cocktails in the back of their hands or they have really advanced anti-riot gear for you know, a third world country. It's definitely something that you can see that America has helped out with. They have these huge militarized vehicles with the um, non-lethal you know, weapons like the, the sound weapons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Speaking of, I had heard that there was a um park maybe somewhere in like south florida that was having a really tough time with uh homeless people and so what they did was they played on the amphitheater speakers baby shark 24 hours a day on repeat and it ended up clearing out so sound amplification is a great way to give it a great way to just clear them out yeah well I'll i'll tell you what i went to a uh we're really getting off topic but i went to a gas station on my way to disney world last week and we stopped in the gas station, and every Question really time, quick. really quick, yes. did you get beef jerky? Yeah, of course. Okay, just just gas station. Yeah, it's gas station. Of course, I got beef jerky. You gotta be kidding me. What else would I do? I, bro, I actually got some nacho slim jims at this at this one. I love oh. nacho slim jims. The nachos, they buy. So, uh, <laughs> but I went in this gas station, and every single time someone opened the door, it held the it had the loudest 
ring. It was like the door opened and go, and I was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was driving me insane. I literally had to leave the store. I told my wife, we were there, like, our kids had to go to the bathroom. I said, you're going to have to pay for this. I cannot take this. It probably went off like 20 <laughs> times in a minute. And I, and I thought to myself, how in the world could a person work here? And she said, they probably get used to it. And I'm like, no, you will never get used to that. That's like the people say you get used to living next to a train track. You don't because you they don't. Blow that horn. It's not like you just yeah. don't hear that. Well, we we live close to a train track, but it's far enough away. It's probably like about uh, a quarter mile from my house. It's far enough away where it's not super super loud and we don't rumble. But it's kind of cool in the middle of the night. You know, you hear, you know, it's just just, just quite enough. enough where it's kind of soothing. You know. Yeah. That little but white noise. Great distance, though, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we're at the right distance. If we were really close to that thing, man, we'd never sleep. So, so okay, back back to uh, back to talking about what's going on in Ecuador. So, how do you think, well, so what kind of similarities, important? yeah, well, what kind of similarities do you see with what's happening in Ecuador? I guess first, let's tackle South America. Like, right. what's happening so, in Ecuador, what's happening in Venezuela, what's happening in Argentina, and I think, like you've mentioned, you think Brazil is next. Yeah, there's like a bunch of little – little mini chess pieces that are kind of getting moved around the board right now and how it plays into the bigger geopolitical role, right? So I think the big thing is basically China, Russia, America, EU, and, and those are the four major superpowers. I grouped the EU into one just because right. that's the reality of the situation. We've been fighting this big giant bear of Russia for the last, you know, mentally, you know, for the last 20 years, and nobody's really acknowledged this sleeping assassin that's been China, you know? You know, now you, you kind of see these alarm bells going off, but the reality is, is that they've been in South America for 20 years, pumping money in large amount, I mean, huge cash injections for infrastructure projects to build roads, roads, bridges, you know, parks, provide money for all, I mean, just lots and lots of money. And it came at a price, you know, these countries are now fully indebted to China. So when they have requests or come becking and calling, it's at our expense. And so we're down there spending money. That's why Ecuador has the dollar. That's why, you know, Honduras has the dollar. That's why Brazil's got so many subsidies. That's why we invest so much money down there. It's not really necessarily because we need it, which we do. I mean, we need the resources, but we could live if we didn't have them. We want to make sure that China and Russia don't get their foothold and, you know, kind of creep up our backs basically and get close enough to hurt us. So in Hong Kong right now, you see, Live ammunition just was used for the first time ever during the protest. Somebody was shot. Uh, that information's not out there, really. It's not, you can't really find it right now. If you look on BBC, it's, it says an eye injury. It doesn't say that he was shot in the eye now. And I'm like, well, why do they change that? Like, they just, it's control. It's state media controlling the, uh, the narrative. And so the rush of HK dollars from where they are into Bitcoin is only evident of what's actually happening. happening. You know, you can see the mistrust, and, and I don't know where they're going. I'm sure that people are flooding out of HKD into US dollars and the Euro as well, but the buy volume from $2 million has gone up to $12 million on the last day um, yeah. from Hong Kong and local purchases for Bitcoins. And so that's indicative of people's trust in the local government not holding. I mean, if they don't trust the currency, they don't trust the, obviously they don't trust the, the power structure because I also showed you that other, um, manifesto the hong kong manifesto yeah. that was released i mean it's like they've literally kind of pushing for a whole government um changeover and why is that important okay so hong kong was a british colony right it's not actually chinese i mean it is chinese because in 1997 Brit, uh, you know uk gave it back to china through the first ever sovereign you know transfer no, I don't, I, are you sure they transferred it and like hong kong is not china the way the treaty set up is the treaty set up so that, I mean, it's not mainland. No, yeah, yeah, it's not. It, it's yeah. completely, geographically, it's separate, but politically and like legally, it's, it's China. And in 2047, but it, they hate, but the, they hate that though. The, the citizens there hate that. Well, so here's what it is. It's weird, man. Like, I don't know because yeah. I'm obviously not a Hong Kong citizen, but think about it from your and my perspective. This Hong Kong people grew up with independent thinking, with free internet, with uncensored state media, you know, with, with real interactions, with a robust economy, okay? They didn't have yeah. the poverty that, that mainlanders did. And it was through British rule. So you had all those kind of European influences there. So is it Chinese culture? Sure, it's Chinese culture. But those people, I don't think, feel very Chinese. No, no, and no. That was no. in 97. And in 97, the British literally gave it back to the Chinese government. And what happened? Hong Kong was a real functioning independent state, okay, like a nation pretty much. 
banks that were official, a currency that was official and pegged to the US dollar, which is the most important factor of this whole equation. Wow. Hong Kong HK dollars are yeah. pegged number one to US dollars. Chinese yuan are not. And Chinese yuan to HK dollars, that ratio, we don't control that. We have nothing to do with that. That's done over there. So all that China had to do was get their roots, get their like, you know, needles in there, get them deep enough in to where, and they are now, now they funneled and control. That is their biggest money laundering arm for the entire government yep. of China is Hong Kong. And if they it's lose crazy. that right now, it is going to be a big problem because they won't be able to hide this huge balloon that they've blown up, which is their economy. And it's not built on anything. It's just air and it's waiting to pop. Right. And all that's going to happen is for Hong Kong to slip. And the, here's what I think is happening. Right. So, in 1997, British gave it back, right? And that's for 50 years. And that 50 year time frame, the, the independent ways of governance stayed the same. So the legal system stayed the same, the financial system stayed the same, the military system stayed the same in Hong Kong. But in 2047, those expire, those stipulations expire, and it goes back into Chinese rule completely. It's Chinese rule then, which means mainland laws, extradition, banks, consequences, right? If you're in Hong Kong, you might want to think about getting out before that happens, for sure. Well, there's, or, I'm sure there's a way to stop it. Or it revolt. I mean, legally, there's... Uh, uh, here, guys, here's the thing. This, I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. I think this is going to turn into a war. I mean, I think, I think this is going to turn into other countries getting involved because China is not going to allow Hong Kong to be independent. I mean, they're, they're not good. They can't. They can't because if they do, like you said that bubble is going to pop. Well, and I feel like what, what we're seeing right now with, with the protests, this is just the beginning of what I think is going to happen because of this global chess match that China is trying to play with all these different countries, with their currency, with the U.S. dollar, and, and what it would mean if Hong Kong were to be able to kind of tell them no, then what's going to happen is that's going to show that they're kind of weak. And then their own people are going to start feeling like, well, they didn't put down yep. that revolt. Yep. So you know what? Maybe it's time for us to do something because the people of China, that's something they think about. I can guarantee it. I mean, they live in a nanny state and they know it. So if they get the littlest inkling, I mean, because how many people are in the government there? That blind loyalty will crack. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. There's more regular citizens there than people in the government. Billions more. I mean, it's Billions crazy. More. It's crazy. Yes. When they finally realize that and they see a, a crack, they're going to go for it, I believe. And I mean, we've already seen like China's like eased up on in a lot of different areas over the last 20 years in terms of like allowing Walmart to come over there and having people have flourishing businesses and all kinds of well, stuff. It's a little bit different. And so it's crazy you mentioned the businesses. Have you seen what's happened in the last 36 hours with the NBA? Two more things that just happened. I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll look them up, but it's basically something about big companies that have stopped doing business with American companies because of Postmaid by prominent people in the Blizzard pulls Hearthstone esports. Something about esports oh, game. Wow. The, yeah. Wow. Drips pro gamer of tournament. That's huge. It's for nerds, but it's huge. It, so yeah, they, they stripped all of his earnings away, this, this professional gamer, for supporting the Hong Kong protests. Wow. And so, like, that's, I, I know that's, that's kind of dumb, right? That's like the, that's the first step. But if they're doing that, they have banned the Houston Rockets from every, they will not play the Houston Rockets games anywhere. Anywhere on any Chinese games with a $1.5 billion deal that they just did um, with the NBA that will now be in jeopardy, you know, because this Houston Rockets owner put up a um, piece for Hong Kong. I mean, it was nothing. It was just like a little stand with Hong Kong, peace for Hong Kong kind of thing. China, China don't play that shit. They don't like that, okay? They crack that this, whip. This thing's getting big. This, this thing, we are just at the beginning. All of this kind of basically... I won't say it started, but it really kicked off with, you know, Trump putting san sanctions on China and things like that. Um, but this, this feud with China and really kind of the rest, of, really feud with China, Russia, and the rest of the world. I mean, I feel like this, this is just getting started right now. And I think we're in the middle of it. I think we are, we are one of the chess pieces in this geopolitical yep. game because, I mean, it can only be proven with our Warren Buffett situation. We went out there, we were in, you know, we expected this to happen. And because mainland didn't appreciate the trump invitation they cracked that whip 100 percent, and changed everything i mean yeah and by and by the way that that was speculation at some point but i've gotten some confirmation that that is true that yeah. is what happened a hundred percent oh yeah i remember when we said that that night we were just talking about it like what if this is like could this be and then yeah 
It's exciting. It's, it's a little nerve wracking. I mean, I'd like to see Hong Kong rise up and really stick it to the man. I don't think that's going to happen on their own. I mean, there's reports of huge mass formations on the Shenzhen province of huge like military formations. And so if they are willing to use lethal force, which they already shot somebody, if they aren't going to back down the tone, because obviously doing like military formations is aggressing things, you know, I, I could see it getting worse before it gets better. And I, the same thing for Ecuador. I mean, I've told my friends like, it's bad in Ecuador right now. The, all the stores are empty. There's mass, you know, looting going on. There's straight delinquencia. It's like just people, bands running around, opening up the shops and going in and taking out everything. And so, God, in a couple such of a bubble weeks, here. Such a bubble. Like, do you, could, could you even imagine? I mean, yeah, that you see no. in like dystopian movies or like, you know, apocalyptic type stuff. But could you imagine that? It's crazy because it's, it's really not that far off, man. Like three weeks ago, everything was fine. Two weeks ago, everything was fine in country. And then in, in a week, the subsidies for gasoline were taken away and for like cooking gas, you know, gas, gas to heat your house with. Those subsidies were taken away and this entire nation has erupted. And, and probably it's like I said, it'll probably get worse because there's not a solution. There's no way. He, the president isn't doing anything bad. He's just saying like, look, we can't afford for these subsidies anymore. We're going to go broke. What do you want us to do? You know? And the people just want a conflict almost it's like they're bored yeah i mean when stuff really starts going downhill it's it's incredible how fast things can dissolve i think in america we really take that for granted because you know it seems so unrealistic that it could happen here but they, you know i watched a documentary one time that said if we got hit with a uh what, what are, what's the thing that hits the power grid what is the, uh, emp an EMP. I kept wanting to say an EMA. I've been doing too many TA videos. Uh, yeah. Is it an EMP? If it were to hit the power grid and knock out all the power in the United States, this documentary said 90% of America would be dead in six months. Six months. I believe it, man. I mean, I really do. Because there wouldn't be enough resources for everybody to continue. No power. I mean, it, dude, I really love the walking dead. That is my jam. I yeah. love the walking dead. Now, who knows? There might be some kind of crazy thing that could cause zombies. I mean, they, they've, they've actually, I know it sounds unrealistic, but they have found animals such as ants that do have a form of what we would consider like a zombie-like virus, right? But I, that's like a, a 0 0.0000000001 chance. But the apocalyptic nature, that can never happen. I'm just going to say it can never happen. I, I don't, there's, me, there's, I, there's another thing zombies. Question. This let is your percent chance. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You get yourself to a position where there is no electricity, you can't watch your phone. That means no more TikTok videos. What do you, <laughs> um, I am what do you ready do? to what do you, kill. What, what do you do to I'm ensure killing. that I'm you can charge your phone enough to see TikTok videos? Because there'll be I'm other gonna degenerates. To, I'm going to have to sacrifice people. I mean, there's no other way around it. I mean, if somebody's got to eat or I have to watch TikTok videos, they I am watching freaking TikTok videos. <laughs> They're going to go hungry. You know what I'm saying? That's and you know what? Maybe, maybe watching them die. I know it sounds morbid, but it might make for great TikTok content. But in all seriousness, the, the apocalyptic nature. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah, I know. I told you it was morbid. The apocalyptic nature of The Walking Dead, I think, is very realistic. The way that now, yes. you, you can't really pick some things. You can pick apart with it, but the fact is, when all is lost and people feel threatened, people do dangerous things i tell you what i tell you right now i will kill for my family in a of second course you will. that's that's the whole you know? point if the emp happens and we don't have food in a month my, my baby doesn't have formula right i'm getting my baby formula my kid's gonna eat and i'll make sure i'll figure it out the scary thing about this whole you know situation or hypothetical is in america everybody's got guns you know oh, yeah mm -hmm. here everybody's got guns I, I would much rather be in ecuador when shit kicks off because i can go up to a fresh water source and fish and I just got to make sure I got like a bigger stick than they do, you know, like I'm okay. <laughs> Jesus. But also at the same time, like America is probably the best country to be in to, for this not to happen. You for know it not saying? to happen, it's the for best. It not to happen. Once it happens, it's but if it does happen, the worst. Oh yeah. I, look, I have a fallout plan. I'm ready. I got my yeah. place. I'm going do where I know I will be safe. I got the whole thing. My fam, my entire family oh. has a plan, extended family, everything. We all have a plan on, where we're going, how we're going to get there, where we're meeting, if something ever did happen. We're not doomsday preppers. I don't have doomsday prepper crap. I got, I got a crazy uncle, and he's got it all. Okay? That's, a, that's, that's, that's all we need to know about. You just need to have one in the family. That's it. That's all you need. If you think about it, though, like, I know we're, this is really, we're really getting off the rails. <laughs> yeah. but, but in all seriousness, though, like, an apocalyptic scenario, people don't think about, like, okay, so I live an hour, or let's just say you work an hour away from your family. 
if you work an hour away from your family and something crazy goes down, like a nuclear bomb goes off or Everyone's whatever, dead. and like you guys are just on the edge of it, Better get to it. You're not gonna be able to get to it because guess what? You're gonna have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. I think about this a lot. Think about Woodstock. You guys remember that concert yeah, Woodstock? Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. used this example a long time ago with me, and it, man, it's, it has stuck with me ever since. Imagine if you and two friends went to Woodstock where there were how many hundred thousand people sure, more than yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but whatever it was, it was a festival in a field. <laughs> Imagine if you lost your friend, like you just lost him. Yeah. Like you're going, you're walking down, you know, there, there's like a crowd of people and then you just turn around like, Oh, Hey, that's my childhood. You know, you go to the you city and all of a sudden your parents would leave you and you get freaked out. Or did your parents ever leave you really when you were kids and then get halfway home. And before they realized they were like, where's the, where's, where's Quinn? You know, no, Quinn, my family loves me. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my family loved me. They wouldn't forget me. Okay. You would never, only if you just happen to be walking the same place they were. Or maybe if you go back to the same place. No, you always had like meetup plans. You remember your families would have like, okay, if you guys get separated, you meet back here at this point at three o'clock. Like, yeah, that's a good that's point. My mom, you know, Jewish mother, maybe, but I just remember always having the meetup plan. <laughs> and then like my dad taught me the maps when I was a kid because we didn't, that's the one thing like, how are you going to get there? Oh, if you're separated and yeah, if you know the area, but if you don't know how to get there, <laughs> get them maps, homie, because like that's Learn the only way we know how to do it before. That was the way to do it. Yeah, you stop at those rest areas and you'd get out there and you'd look there or you'd figure where you are, you know. That's, that was what it was, so. I did it. I am old enough to remember having to navigate across the country with a map. And then yeah. we got, uh, what was it? Uh, it was the Rand McNally. And then it was, what was the Microsoft Streets and Trips? Garmin. It was the I Garmin. Tom, Tom Tom. Tom Tom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's when you were big timing, you know. And then all of a sudden it was yeah. in the car. You were like, big timing what? if you had one. You know, it was in the car all of a sudden. I had, I, I had a, a job where I traveled around like setting up new home depots all across the country. And we had one guy that we worked with that had one. And it was like, man, you're like, hey, uh, you mind if I ride with you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this guy's going to know where he's going. He's yeah. going to know where he's going. Like he was fancy. Like he, he had it together, you know. So, well, if you are interested in uh, a map to the best practices of Bitcoin, make sure you guys check out beardsandbitcoins.com and you guys can uh, uh, download that for free. Just put your email address. Um, and uh, we can get that to you. Uh, Quinn, thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, we're definitely going to have you on probably several times over the next year. Um, I, I haven't told that to Jay Chains or asked him. Work. Hey, man, it works for me. I thought that it was, yeah. it was great. It was good. Super great episode today. Appreciate you having me, Papa Giorgio. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, well, that is it. You guys can look for uh, our Decentralized America tour coming to a city near you. We'll have more details on that, uh, you know, coming up in the next few weeks. That's all we got for today. Thank you to our show sponsor, monarchtoken.io. We're out. See ya. Cool. We got this shit knocking, bro.